Across from the Federal Courthouse on Main Street in downtown Los Angeles is Fletcher Bowen Square. With its outdoor sculptures and dining area, it offers people who work and live here a respite from the hectic pace of the city. On this site, 160 years ago, stood the Bella Union Hotel, where cars and buses speed by today Stagecoaches once deposited fresh pilgrims to the Pueblo of Los Angeles, and their first sample of civilization was the Bella Union. When it opened its doors in 1849, it became the setting of the young city's growth and progress. In addition to providing lodging to guests, the hotel served as the city's first courthouse and was the county seat of Los Angeles. In a shack behind the hotel, the city's first newspaper, the Los Angeles Star, was printed. Early editions of the Star were published in both English and Spanish. During the Civil War, the Bella Union was a hive for Southern sympathizers. The proprietors displayed in their saloon a photograph of Confederate General P.G.T. Beauregard, who was labeled as the hero of Fort Sumter. Tensions and tempers often ran hot at the Bella Union, and one was just as likely to witness a wedding as well as a fistfight happening simultaneously under its roof. And that is exactly the kind of affair we will examine in this edition. So come walk with me and explore what has been called L.A.'s version of the gunfight at the O.K. Corral. Looking out over where the Bella Union once stood, it's difficult to imagine what L.A. looked like in the mid-1860s. But to get an idea, one only needs to walk a few short blocks away to El Pueblo de Los Angeles. With the founding of Our Lady Queen of Angels Catholic Church in 1814, the plaza became the hub from which the city grew. Where the bandstand is located today was the site of LA's original waterworks. The brick structure seen in these early photos is the city's first reservoir. The Pico House, built in 1869, was one of the first modern hotels in the city. It had 80 rooms, running water, and piped in gas for heating and lighting. The melding of cultures that we see here today is no different to how it was in 1865. And on July 5th of that year, most of LA's elite showed up for the wedding of a prominent merchant that was billed as the social engagement of the season. The reception that followed took place at the Bella Union, where there was much merrymaking and heavy consumption of alcohol. One of those in attendance was the city's undersheriff, Andrew Jackson King. King came to California from Georgia in 1852. He studied law, and before becoming undersheriff of Los Angeles, he served in the state legislature. The King family were also landowners in what is now El Monte. Another there that night was Robert Snell Carlisle. He had come to California from Missouri and operated one of the state's largest cattle operations on his 46,000-acre ranch in Chino, about 50 miles east of L.A. Carlisle was known for his charm and good looks. According to legend, he had a large cut diamond mounted on his front tooth to give his smile an extra sparkle. But he was equally famous for his quick temper, and was suspected of putting more than one man in his grave. The bringing together of Carlisle and King in the same place was a risky choice, as a feud had been brewing between them for several months. It was over a judge's ruling on a property dispute that went in King's favor, and on the night of July 5th, the feud reached its flashpoint. At around midnight, the reception was still going strong, when angry voices interrupted the cheerfulness. Guests turned to see the flash of a bowie knife wielded by Robert Carlyle slash Andrew King across the chest and hand. King backed into the crowd 
and pulled a pocket derringer, which he fired at Carlyle, but the shot missed. A few quick-thinking guests stepped in and stopped the violence before it could escalate, but all they did was delay it. As the bleeding Andrew King was taken away, Carlyle shouted that he would kill him or anyone in his family that he saw. The next morning found Andrew King in bed, nursing his knife wounds. Meanwhile, his brothers Sam and Frank decided to call on Robert Carlyle to see if he intended to make good on his King-killing threat. Sam King had a reputation for his hot temper that matched Carlyle's. Ten years earlier, at age 18, he hunted down and killed the man who murdered his father. Just before noon on July 6th, the King brothers confronted Carlisle, who was still in the barroom of the Bella Union, and called him out onto the street. No one knows who fired first, but the shooting began as soon as Carlisle stepped onto the sidewalk. Four bullets ripped into his stomach and he fell back against the front of the hotel. A ball struck Sam King in the chest, puncturing his lung. The only one left standing was Frank who went in for the kill. He carefully aimed his revolver at Carlyle's head and pulled the trigger, but the hammer fell on a spent chamber. Instead, he began clubbing his victim with the butt of his gun, repeatedly, until it flew into pieces. As his assailant withdrew, Carlyle, who was still conscious, managed to fire a final shot that struck Frank in the chest. The murderous affray at the Bella Union ended as quickly as it began. During the melee, a stray bullet killed a horse that was hitched to a stagecoach team. Another struck a bystander in the thigh. As the smoke cleared, Sam and Frank King were carried to a nearby doctor. Carlyle was brought into the Bella Union and laid down on a billiard table where he demanded a drink of whiskey. He died of his wounds at 20 minutes past three that afternoon. The bullet that struck Frank pierced his heart, killing him instantly. He was given a large public funeral and buried in the family plot at Savannah Memorial Park in Rosemead, California. His grave is unmarked, but it is not far from his parents, Sam Sr. and Martha King. Though gravely injured, Sam survived thanks to the surgical skills of a local doctor and a lot of luck. After a slow recovery, he was charged with the murder of Robert Carlyle, but was acquitted after a sensational trial. Sam later moved to Arizona where he raised a family and became a farmer. He died in 1915 at the age of 78. Although he did not take part in it, Andrew Jackson King resigned as undersheriff in the wake of the shootout, but it was not the end of his career. In addition to his land holdings, he was a prominent attorney and was appointed as an LA County judge. He died on October 14th 1923 at the age of 90. He is buried at Savannah Memorial Park in an unmarked grave next to his brother Frank who died defending the family's honor. In recent years a historic marker was added to his resting place that describes the fateful encounter at the Bella Union. There was little fanfare over the death of Robert Carlyle. Contemporary newspapers reported that his bullet-riddled body was taken from the Bella Union and buried in accordance with Masonic rites. His resting place was in the city cemetery on Fort Moore Hill that overlooked the plaza and the place where his life expired. But after his body was sealed in its crypt, it was not the end of its journey. Over the years, the Bella Union Hotel went through a succession of new owners. Perhaps to escape its violent past, 
The name was changed to the St. Charles Hotel in the 1880s. Notice the ironical positioning of the rifle and pistol shooting sign on the right. The building remained until 1940, when it was demolished to make room for a parking lot. It's a heartbreaking loss when you contemplate its importance to the formation of modern Los Angeles. In June 1895, children walking through the old city cemetery discovered the doors of a private mausoleum hanging open. Peeking inside, they noticed that one of the crypts had been disturbed. When the caretaker and police came to inspect the damage, no one remembered who was entombed here. Even when they read the name Robert Carlyle on the stone that had been pried from its niche, it wasn't immediately familiar. In the three decades since the shootout at the Bella Union, the names of the participants had mostly slipped from memory. By then, Los Angeles was well on its way to becoming one of the nation's premier cities, and it was eager to leave its turbulent and lawless beginnings in the past. When the caretaker entered the mausoleum, he couldn't resist peering into the coffin that had been pried open with a knife. This is how the Herald newspaper described what he found. Casting his eyes into the lower niche where rested the casket containing the remains of Carlyle, he saw that the coffin had been broken into, and instead of a skull grinning up at him through the aperture, there was but a tangled mass of long brown hair strewn over the side of the box. Oh look, he exclaimed, the skull is gone. In the absence of a suspect, the article speculated on the reason someone might have taken the skull. One was that it became a morbid artifact in someone's cabinet, or that one of Carlyle's enemies desired to pursue him, even in death, by profaning his corpse. But the most likely motive for the theft, the Herald said, was that it was taken for the valuable cut diamond that was said to be mounted on its front tooth. Whatever the reason, the skull and those who took it have never been found. After the requisite inquiries were made and the reports filed, the niche was sealed up and the mausoleum closed and locked. Robert Carlyle's body lay undisturbed for the next 52 years. In fact, it was not until 1947 long after the rest of the graves in the old city cemetery had been relocated that he was finally moved. His remains and those of his grandson were reinterred here at the Doorway of Peace Mausoleum at Rose Hill Cemetery in Whittier, California. After a brief, violent life and a restless afterlife, Robert Carlyle finally has a place where he can remain undisturbed for all time. The Bella Union gunfight is shocking not only for its suddenness and violence, but for who was involved. In their day, Robert Carlyle and the King family were important figures in Southern California society. With the passage of time, it's difficult to determine who was right or who was wrong, who was good or who was evil. In actuality, all of those traits, in some degree, can be applied to everyone at any one time or another. But the one thing that is indisputable is that the Carlisles and Kings can be counted among those who brought progress to a dusty Pueblo. Throughout this video, I looked to the past and walked among moldering gravestones to understand what kind of men Robert Carlyle and Andrew King were. From where Robert Carlyle now lies, there is a high terrace that on a clear day gives a breathtaking view across the central basin to downtown Los Angeles. It was while contemplating this view, I realized that if it were not for people like them, it might not be here at all. They were men with eyes set to the future, 
so perhaps it would have been best to seek them out in the concrete, steel and glass of those distant, tall towers. Thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. It really helps a lot. Also, if you would like to become a contributor, click the link to go to my Patreon page. Even a dollar a month goes a long way. And if you haven't already, please subscribe now for more Grave Explorations.